Hey, this is Jimmy Archer with Inside Triathlon, and I'm standing here with 2004 Xterra World Champion Jamie Whitmore, um, Boulder Center for Sports Medicine Sports Science Director Neil Henderson, and Biomechanist Todd Carver. And basically, everyone except for me <laughs> is going to be working to get Jamie set up on her, her bike for the 2007 season. It's only December of 2006 right now, but this is, you know, if you want to be top level pro, you got to start early, you got to get everything taken care of a long time ahead of time. And she's looking to uh, reclaim her title from for 2007. So I'm going to hand it over to Neil. He's going to kind of tell you what they're going to be doing a little bit here. And uh, so what are, we, what are we doing? What are we doing? Well, <laughs> we uh, had Jamie come out here this week to do a couple things. We did some physiology testing to kind of help her train, make sure she's doing the right thing at the right time to be able to build her fitness to be on peak form in October of 2007. And we're also going to be looking at the biomechanics of her cycling. With that, we're going to be using our 3D system here, which is a peak moda system. We have six infrared cameras basically around our biomechanics lab, and they're going to be emitting the infrared light, which is going to be picked up by these reflective markers that are placed at different anatomic positions on Jamie's body, at her toe, her ankle, knee, and hip. And we're going to collect this information, which is fed into a computer, and we're going to be digitizing Jamie like a video game basically as a stick figure and be watching her motion while she pedals down to the millimeter to see where she's at, if she's in the right position or not what kind of changes need to be made to really optimize her performance in 2007. What I'm going to be concerned with here is her position on this bicycle relative to the bottom bracket. She's mainly a mountain bike racer. Um, she, she races on a hardtail so the two positions should transfer almost directly. Um, with the exception of different hand, hand placements on the bars. Um, the first thing that we're going to measure through our motion capture system are her ankle, knee, and hip angles as she's riding at 7 on a 10 scale of effort. Um, the, all the markers that she's wearing here reflect into the cameras above her. There's six of them. Uh, they triangulate and digitize 3D coordinates. From there, I calculate all the angles in the software. Um, we're going to be looking for normal limits and ankling in knee angles to tell us that the saddle is in the right spot. I think one of her primary concerns is relieving some stress in her hip region. She gets some sciatic problems and some tight hamstrings. I can already see that her handlebar placement relative to this saddle is at the extreme. In other words, her saddle to bar drop, saddle to bar differential is at 8 centimeters right now. The Italian Fit Bible says no handlebars should be greater than eight centimeters below the saddle. So she's at the extreme. And I mean, that rule really means that you're 20 years old, you're male, and you're Italian. She's not any of those. So she's probably going to be a little bit happier on the road bike with the bars a little bit higher. I think she's pushing on the pedals hard enough right now. The workload's high enough that we're going to see what we want from this marker set. So what I'm going to do is get out of here pull the curtain and shoot some video. I'm going to take five seconds of video from all six cameras, I'm sorry, seven cameras at once. A lot of people have never seen themselves ride in a controlled environment. They see themselves at different angles of cameras, they can't really tell anything, but a lot of times when people see themselves ride, they can do half of my bike fit by themselves. When I take your pedal to the bottom of the pedal stroke here, and I record your knee angle, you are at 28 degrees on the right side and 27 degrees on the left. If I look at your ankle angle, you're 58 degrees and 61 degrees. 90 degrees is a level heel. Mm -hmm. So what these two joints tell us is you're reaching at the knee, you're reaching at the ankle, and you're rocking the hip to get to that pedal at the bottom of the stroke. We also see that the range of motion at the knee, or how much your knee flexes and extends, is 81 degrees on the right, 82 degrees on the left. And you have 175 cranks because you like those on your mountain bike. Mm -hmm. Those cranks are too big for you. We're also going to work with the stem and bring these bars back and up to take some of the tension off your back, okay, and your hips and your sciatica and your hamstrings. It all kind of goes together. So you right now have stretched, stretched your musculoskeletal system to the max. You're stretched at the saddle, you're stretched at the bars. So this is a calculated side view. 
So what we're looking for is equal and opposite movement at the hips, the knees, and the feet. From a side view, your hip markers on your greater trochanter here should line up right over top of each other. Your kneecap markers right on the end of your knee should line up right over top of each other. If the hips line up and the knees don't, there's a leg length inequality. If both are off, there's a pelvic shift. So you do have a pelvic shift right side forward when you stand it's right side down but on the bike it manifests itself as right side forward um, I would not correct that at this point um, I would leave that to probably your structural therapist the true way to fix this is not with the mechanical correction at the cleat it's with physical um, therapy what I'd like to do now is make a couple changes to the position I would like to lower her saddle five millimeters to a centimeter. I would like to bring her handlebars up two or three centimeters, and I would like to narrow her stance width. So those are the three big things I see. What that's gonna do, lowering the saddle is gonna prevent her from reaching for the pedal at the bottom, like you saw on the data. Um, bringing the handlebars up is gonna eliminate the stress across her back and her hip region. Um, narrowing her stance width is going to improve her knee over foot alignment. And hopefully all of this will resolve her sciatica problems and give her a little bit more power. This is before the changes and this is after. What I see here is a lot of rounding in the back, reaching for the brake hoods. What I see here is reaching at the knee and the ankle for the pedal at the bottom of the stroke. As we move to the um, after capture, I see a much more relaxed torso position much less stress on the back, the hips, and the legs. I also don't see her pointing the toe as much, reaching for the pedal at the bottom of the stroke. I see that her knee angles are now within normal limits. Before the saddle height change, her knee angles were 28, it was 28 degrees on the right, now it's 30 degrees. It was 27 on the left, now it's 31. So we look for numbers in the 30s on knee angles. Her ankling, she's not pointing the toes as much. I'm really happy with what we've seen so far. I think it really shows you're gonna be a lot more comfortable in this position.